You know, the concept of what's going on in the state and local environment in the context of the recent economic collapse is uh, its not a light subject, it's not a happy subject. Uh, last week I had the opportunity to be at the National Public Policy Meetings in Washington, D.C. We had two roundtables on the topic of what's going on in state and local finance. And the longest, most depressed face you could find in this room is where we all started and it got worse from there. Uh, as you talk to the leaders who are involved in state and local policy in California, you find one, or California or any other state, um, you find one simple fact. They're in a lot of pain right now. If they were a patient, and in the era of healthcare debate, we'll use this example to walk us through our talk today. If they were a patient, they'd be laying on the floor hemorrhaging. Um, they, would have, they would have major injuries and contusions, and you would see their life's blood flowing out on the cement. That is how they see the world around them right now. Now, is this a realistic view, or are they just lost in some sort of myopia? Well, the first thing is kind of obvious. State and local governments are in fact facing two events that have combined and conspired, so to speak, to change their public finance model. The first is the collapse of the real estate market. Now, for a lot of jurisdictions across the country, that real estate collapse has been significant but it's almost been defined. It's almost over. It's re in some real estate markets, we actually see recovery in areas besides foreclosures. However, in the really big real estate markets, the ones that lead this country into the dreams of home ownership and the wealth that comes with it, that's not the case. If you look at California, if you look at Texas, if you look at Florida, if you look at Arizona, Nevada, the golden states of opportunity in real estate, places where in California 20% appreciation every single year was not unrealistic. In those places, this market collapse has been, has been and continues to be sustained and real. Uh, the market activity going on in California and Nevada right now is not associated with people saying, gee, I'd like to buy a house. In fact, a couple weeks ago, I told my students in one of my classes, it was exciting. I saw a house go for more than $400,000. Guess what? That house fell out of escrow. So I still can't say that. There is no real estate activity in the non-foreclosure sector. Houses over $300,000 are not moving. And these are houses that two years ago were selling for, you know, if you're talking about a $350,000 house today, it could have been a five or a six or a $700,000 house years ago. So we're talking about deeply discounted prices. So the real estate market combined to do two things. It, it killed real estate sales. What's that do to local governments? Well, the first thing it does is state, and local state governments make a lot of money off of capital gains, off of the sale of fixed assets. Well, those sales aren't happening. The second thing it did, and this isn't just in California, this isn't any state, is that property taxes are a function of the value of local houses. And I just pointed out how property values have fallen 30, 40, 50, sometimes 60%. Well, guess what that does to property tax revenues for local governments? It wipes them out. So cities and counties, school districts, local districts, uh, those kind of governments are devastated by the changes in property taxes. And across the nation, that's the one trend that these governments feel more than any other. But on top of that, something else happened. The financial market collapsed. Now, what does that mean? <coughs> what that means is Wall Street, the, the Dow Jones Industrials, lost 40% of their value overnight. And they've gained some of that back in recent weeks. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a few seconds. Um, but those markets stopped operating, essentially, a year ago today, essentially. It was almost exactly 12 months ago when the Federal Reserve governors were, waking, were not going to sleep at night because they didn't know if there would be a financial market the next day. And they didn't have anybody to call because if anybody knew what they were up to, the markets might well have done it. One of the things about our stock markets are they're creatures of psychology. And people have expectations, and if there's any doubt at all, people get scared and run out the door. And that's what was happening in our financial markets a year ago today. Well, why would that affect local governments? Well, two reasons. One is, all of these people who invested in the stock market took a lot of losses during that window. Well, losses mean you're not paying income taxes. For the seven years prior to that, people had been paying more and more income taxes on the stock transactions that they were cashing in on because the market was flying up, up, up. Well, states especially sucked up that money. 
They loved it because that was capital gains income, it was free tax money, <coughs> and they got to go and spend it. But all of a sudden, all of that not only disappeared, it went away completely. And then the two things combined to create some remarkable transformations in the American economy. All of a sudden, it wasn't just the stock market investors who were hurting. You couldn't borrow money. Retailers couldn't borrow money to sell goods to consumers, which is okay because consumers couldn't buy, borrow money to buy goods. And all of a sudden, retailers stopped putting out their little help wanted signs for the Christmas season last year. And this year, you don't see too many. Retailers stopped doing things. Manufacturers stopped having people to sell things to because retailers weren't buying stuff. And throughout the economy, we saw a ripple. And that ripple was in unemployment. And all of a sudden, people started getting afraid of their jobs. And if you have any friends in the workforce at all, I'm willing to bet you know at least one or two of them who have lost their jobs in the last 12 months. Uh, one of my really close friends came to me in January last year. Worked in an te information technology company, built uh, infrastructure for sharing networks and businesses. Laid them off. Why? It wasn't because their product was bad. It wasn't because their price was too high. It was simply because nobody was doing anything. Nobody was buying those goods because everybody was afraid. And in fact, consumers did what? Many people went to the bank and took out their money, stuck it under their mattress. Because banks were failing at an all-time high rate. And guess what? They still are. This year is the highest single year of bank failures that the Federal Reserve has had to deal with. So all these things combined, high unemployment, tight credit activity that stifled business, I have another friend whose business is about to go under. I mean, you might think this is all behind us. Look, the stock market's turning around. His business is about to go under. Why is it about to go under? He sells. They're developing a product that is a high mileage car. And by high mileage, I mean 100 miles to the gallon. 125 miles to the gallon. It's sort of a variation of the smart car. Their business is going out of, out of uh, business because <coughs> they can't find investors. Why is that? Well, let me think. The government's borrowing trillions of dollars right now, and there's not enough capital for business activity. One of the things that we learn in economics is about crowding out. Well, guess what? It's happening. So all of these things are feeding back on themselves to really sub suppress employment across the country. And it's not just in California. It's not just in New York where the financial services are. Construction jobs across the country have all but disappeared. There's some minor comeback right now, um, but winter's coming on, and it's a seasonal job, so we know that those numbers aren't going to come back for long. Um, we see high unemployment in construction, we see it in financial services, we see it in hospitality, education. People are staying home. They're not buying the expensive toys. Retailers are trying to stretch out the holiday season to create any sales in the fourth quarter this year because they don't want to bet it all on one weekend, especially if there's a chance that weekend is going to be cloudy. And so we have all these negative things going on. Revenues for local governments as a result of this are at an all-time low. Sales taxes, property taxes, income taxes, you name it. Local governments, uh, hospitality taxes, hotel taxes. All these things are taking a bath. California today has to, uh, announced that there's a $21 billion shortfall in the current budget cycle. So for the fiscal year ending in 2011, we have to come up with uh, $21.7 billion. Now, where does that money come from? Well, that money reflects the fact that my friend, who was employed in January last year, isn't employed. So he's not paying income taxes. He's not buying the goods that he used to buy. So he's not paying sales taxes on them. And his house value has gone down, so guess what he did? He went to the assessor and said, gee, you should assess me on the lower value of my house. And the assessor had to agree because the property taxes are based on the market value. And so he's paying less in property taxes. He's paying less in every single tax category that he paid to local government. And thousands and millions of Californians are doing the same thing. So state income tax revenues, state property tax revenues, state sales tax revenues are through the floor. Like I said, this isn't the most exciting uh, talk in some ways, but it's where local government is right now. Two years ago, now recognize that two years ago,